Hi Pottery Peeps. So you have me today. Um, we are going to make wine bottle toppers or bottle toppers or heck, you could do so many things that you want to cap a bottle with. And I'm going to make miniature gnomes. So they're just super cute. Um, when I make these, I usually sell out of them pretty fast. And um, for those of you who are going to ask, um, depending on the gnome, I usually sell, and of course the price of this, what I can get this for, they usually sell between 15 and 20 and I always sell out. So um, I have the uh, art festival coming up in September, which is, I got to make something for it. I do have some things, but um, my inventory is very low <laughs> with um, everything that's happened this year. So this is something that I can do this way. So for an update on what's going on with me, they um, did injections in my neck because I've got bulging discs um, from the whiplash and they were hoping it was going to take care of the pain in my arm. Took care of some of the pain in my arm, but still having pain, so they ordered an MRI with contrasting dye. I'm going to put a picture up of what's going on in my shoulder. Um, and you know, as a potter, the shoulders and your upper back, that's where all your power comes from. For throwing um, it's actually not in your hands and it's it's in your bones of your arms but it's not here it's here and so in the picture that I'm showing all the white stuff is um, torn so I get surgery <laughs> yay um, I'm actually I just want to get it and get it over with so I get on the other side of it and recover so I can get back in here and doing what I'm doing and I want this shoulder to be strong. I have had rotator cuff surgery before on this one, probably 10, 12 years ago. I, I tore it snowboarding, which is kind of a badge of honor. <laughs> and that one I actually tore completely through so I couldn't even move the arm. This one's got a whole bunch of little, little tear or halfway tears, 50% and so forth. The biceps even torn, they might have to reattach, cut it with the rest of the tear and then reattach it actually lower, like here instead of here. So we'll see how that goes. So I have a lot of physical therapy, I already started physical therapy for the neck and then uh, this and then, so my summer's kind of gone. So what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and um, film some videos so I have them in the queue and um, See if the students will continue to make some that I don't have um, filmed. And I do have some ideas for a vlog. So stay tuned. Um, I'm not, I'm trying to keep everything going even though I'm down. And hopefully get over this and no more injuries. Right? Wouldn't that be nice? So my mother, oh, update on my mom. Um, she is currently in South Naknek, Alaska, getting ready for the um, red sockeye or the sockeye season, fishing season. And uh, she is, my mother is 76. Uh huh. So come on. I have those genes. <laughs> I got, granted, in her 50s, she was having knee replacements. So maybe my 70s are just going to be killer, right? And I do have to say this about uh, those of you who have been following for a while. Um, the amount or the, the medical care that my mom got in Sicily, even with the language barrier, so much better than what I've gotten. It's two months. It's been two months since the accident. We're now doing something. I mean, granted, it took five weeks to get the injections. But this is ridiculous. You know, I shouldn't have to be hurting that long and going through all of this before you actually find the root of the problem and fix it. Anyway, rant over. So let's go ahead and get to making these adorable little gnomes. These gnomes, you don't have to put them on this. You can, they're great for little fairy houses. They're, you know, gnomes are gnomes. Everybody could use a gnome. I don't know of anybody who doesn't like gnomes. They're just cute. All right, let's go ahead and lower you down and I'll show you how I do this. Okay, so <laughs> I made one on the camera, but I noticed I had um, part of the camera covered. So we're gonna do this again. <laughs> um, I don't last very long out here because I didn't even, with my neck messed up, we don't realize how much we bend over. And uh, when I was out here with Savannah the other day, I was out here too long and I went to 
pull my head up and wow. <laughs> so we're working on that in physical therapy. So hopefully we get a, so my knees used to keep me out of here. I, I started at half an hour and then I worked up to an hour and then I couldn't walk anymore. So my neck is keeping me, I can make it about an easy 30 minutes to 45 minutes and then I gotta go rest the neck. Jeez, so crazy. And if you guys had known me before the knees, I was a powerhouse. <laughs> the things I could get done in a day, I miss those days. I'm gonna get back to them though. Bannon determined that um, it's not gonna beat me. I am a very optimistic person. Um, even though I've had moments of anger and depression with all of this, I try not to stay there because it doesn't serve me. It's not going to get me where I want. All right, so let's get back to this. This one that I did um, ended up being a little too tall. So let's see if we can. It's actually harder to make small things than you think. So actually, get off of me and get on to that. So when you're rolling out a coil, I usually wet down my table. It's just damp, um, just so that this doesn't dry out. Um, and when you roll out, roll with this part of your hand. Keep your fingers out of it, because your fingers are going to, if you're pushing with your fingers, you're gonna get the dimples, and it also makes it go square on you to where you're doing the thunk, the thunk, the thunk, the thunk on the table. But if you just roll with the hand, any parts of the palm, you're usually pretty good. You can usually keep that round. So I'm going to go ahead and cut off an end. And we'll see where we're at. About, you know, take it down on the table. We are hitting 90 degrees. I can feel it. And last week we were had this big, huge hail and rainstorm, and I think it was 50s and 60s. That's Utah for you. All right. I like to make these guys, this is B-Mix, it'll shrink 11%. So I like to make them a little bit bigger than um, what I'm using to, and you can do corks too. You don't have to do these metal ones. I just think they're cool. Um, but it might look really cool to glue on it onto a cork. And I use the, the um, E6600 glue, epoxy glue, to glue stuff together with pottery. It's by far the best glue. So what I'm doing now is I'm basically making a carrot because I'm making his hat. I do not hollow these guys out. Um, I need surface because this already has a hole in it. I need as much surface to glue so that um, they uh, adhere really well so I don't hollow them out. And it's so small. I mean, what is it? Probably an inch in diameter. Less than that three-fourths of an inch in diameter. So I'm not worried about um, it being too solid and not drying out, especially with the dry heat that we have here in Utah. Okay, so I'm just kind of shaping my hat. I already know it's too long. We'll take that piece off. In fact, we're just gonna take this piece and do a ball for his nose. Okay. And I'm already getting him too big too. Let's see. You can also just do a lump of clay for the body of the gnome, and then pinch or pinch um, the hat like a like do a pinch pot. Okay, I think I'm going to I'm just dipping this into the water again, and I'm just going to pull this part out, just like you pull a handle. Not doing a lot of pressure, just pulling with these. You can see where the clay's at on my hand. And then I'm just gonna make that to more of a point. I don't want any sharp bits <clears throat> because you're gonna be picking this up with your hand. And if it is for a wine bottle and maybe you've indulged too much, <laughs> you might not be um, picking it up as thoughtfully as you might normally. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and score his nose, put his nose on. Where's my brush? Put some water. 
This plate, as you saw, is just right out of the bag. So I just need to find out where I'm going to put his nose, and it's going to be right there. That's where his nose is pulling me. So I'm just going to score that a little bit. And then I'm going to, I like to twist the nose on just to make sure. I think this nose is going to be more of an oval, kind of like um, Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. Their noses are an oval. All right, we'll do that. Now we're going to do the beard. Okay, so beards, if you um, think about it, they're just, especially for gnomes, well, actually even for men, they're in the shape of a bib, which is actually kind of funny because growing up in Alaska with all the sourdough men up there, a lot um, of their beards did have part of their meal in them. <laughs> All right, so yeah, I probably shouldn't have wet the table, but I'm getting kind of worried that I'm place drying out too much on me. Let's see, let's go ahead and smooth the back of this. And then I need to cut a beard. And what I do, I normally always cut, cut them too big. And Kind of like a little wave there. So I know this is too big, so I'm going to go ahead and cut it down already. There we go. And then I cut out the, the bib part. So it looks like that. Then I'll fit it. Let's see, it's already too long, but I could do, actually, no. Like I said, I don't want any pieces sticking out that could easily get broken. That's one thing you got to think about when you're doing functional pottery. And this is kind of a decorative function. Okay, that'll work. Um, how it's going to be used so that you aren't making something that is easily broken. All right, so I'm just going to score where the beard's going to go. These are pretty quick. You can make a lot of these in an hour. And since you're probably gonna ask in the comments, I sell these guys because I have to take into account that, which I think is kind of a classy look. Also, when I'm putting down the beard, I start in the middle and then I work to the sides just to make sure I'm not trapping any air in there. Oh, he's so cute. Now I'll come back with my kind of well I don't want you know I'll soften the edge there and then um, come back with the brush make sure I've got a good connection I like that little jaunt I like the beards to kind of do that take my little finger tool clean up underneath his nose Making sure that beard's right up under there. And then clean all that up. So when you're doing the hair for the beard, a little bit too much slip on here. I do like the beard too, to kind of go up around the nose also makes it easier for glazing because you don't have like a pocket or a triangle there of what would what should, it would be a space but um it's just a hard thing to paint so if i take the beard up and around his nose then i only have to worry about the paint in the nose and paint in the beard all right so this one um i like this little tool you can also use like a pencil type tool. I have also um, done it where I just use the scoring rib, the one you just saw me use to make the little hairs. But this one I'm gonna do this. And so I usually start on the outside and then I got that little lip and then sometimes you'll get some clay so I have a little sponge here. Then I start on the other outside 
otherwise you can get your hairs off to where they're kind of diagonal. I've done that before, so this is how I've kind of done it, to where I just go from side to side. And then finish it all up. And then I'll bring in, you can also wait till it dries, um, but I like the beard to look like it's soft. So I'll come in with my brush and just, and then we've got that type of beard. So now the only thing we have left to do is to finish his hat. And I am sweating already. <laughs> Excuse me, as I dampen my face up its flow. <laughs> All right, so a little bit of clay. This is kind of already drying out because it was in my head out here. And I'm just going to make a coil. You can make it as skinny or as fat. You can also, um, these ones, I just made a little nub for his body and then just pinch potted the hat. You know, made a little pinch pot and put it over. So you can also do it that way. But I kind of like that they're all one piece here. It's all one solid piece. All right, so what I'm gonna do now, so I'm gonna get it wet with my paintbrush where I'm gonna put it. I'm not gonna worry about scoring it. And then I'm gonna take him Take the coil around his nose first and then just wrap it around him. And I'll just cut and it's okay if you cut straight through or if you do a diagonal, it doesn't really matter. I'm going to add some water and then I'm going to take a cute little finger tool and work this hat into or the brim into the rest of the hat and that's this is the reason why i don't slip and score it plays right out of the bag and i am going to blend it into the hat anyway so this just speeds up on how fast you can make these guys, which is pretty fast. And then I will address the seam. Make sure it's really good. I'll look at him, see if I need to pull this down around the nose, and I usually always have to. I kind of like that look where it's pulled down. Once I pull it down, sometimes you have to go back in and make sure you're still really connected. Now you can do some decoration on this brim, or you can just leave it. Today's a big day, so I'm probably just gonna leave it. Plus the more decoration I do, the more expensive they should be. And I like to, also the bigger the gnome, the more expensive they should be, that should all go in. In fact, I do plan to, while I'm down, do a blog on how I price things. I've been making a list of things to do. Unfortunately, since I've had this surgery before, however, this one's kind of different because um, there's multiple pieces, not just one thing that completely torn. There's multiple pieces that are most or that are over fifty percent, fifty percent, or anyway. They're torn halfway, <laughs> thereabouts. Okay, so I've got that. I'm actually gonna clean off some of him. I like to have things as clean off as possible so that as they're drying, I don't have to touch them again. They go into the kiln and I usually don't touch them again after I make them. I'll look them over and see if I need to, but your future self will really thank you if you just take the extra few seconds to clean anything up that should be cleaned up at this stage so that you don't have to come back at it. And mainly I do this because I was taught how to do this by my high school teacher. She really pressed that. 
But when things are bone dry and you're trying to clean up, your risk of breaking them goes up significantly. All right, so now I'm just going to curl his little hat and he's actually probably um, too big too. <laughs> Like I said, it's really hard to do super small things. Granted, he's going to shrink, but he's cute. <laughs> so let's hope he shrinks a lot. And I usually don't. Actually, I think I'm just going to. Yeah, so I do keep the curl of his hat kind of close to, or um, the tip of his hat kind of close to the whole hat so that um, less chance of breaking. Now, some of these I've gone in and put flowers and leaves on. I mean, you can really decorate them up. Uh, okay, I'm gonna choose the other arm. I've even done a little witch hat the other day and it's solid too. And because you know, Halloween's coming up, we should all be making Halloween stuff. I've done some mushrooms, cute little tiny toadstool, and then a more decorative mushroom. And I'll link this into the description, but this is a Mako mold. What's it called? Celestial Press Mold. And I was playing with this one, and I was able to make the sun and the moon and star. So, you know, these little tiny things could be a big um, money maker for you. So, whoo, all right, <laughs> dab the glow, right? <laughs> but they could be, you know, a big money maker for you. And um, these press molds that you can find um, either online or um, Mako's got quite a few of them. I've even done, I've got one of their Green Man molds. So I did a Green Man because I love the Green Man. I love anything Celtic. Um, and I'll show you that mold. So this one, and it's called Gargoyles and Fleur de Lis. So those are some fun things that you can get, but you don't have to. I mean, you saw how fast it was to sculpt one of these guys. So give it a try. Um, did I say how much I charge for these? Anywhere between 15 and 20, depending on the size and the decoration of what I do. So I try to keep, try to keep them small and easy and not quite so much bigger because that's more clay and it'll be more glaze but um it'll still work but so think of those things that um that people are more apt to um you can sell you can make a lot of these in an hour and yeah you've got the cost of this but like i said you could also do a cork and i think corks are probably cheaper than these um and these will be linked so anyway just thinking outside the box mainly because i want to do clay and i'm doing clay like this instead of this where this is messed up there is no doing that pressure to center absolutely none anyway so that's me for today and let's see do i have any other thing to share um i don't think so <laughs> i am gonna do a couple of um videos like i said um that i'm gonna put up in the queue and i've got some fun ideas to make it easy um um anyway we'll get into that later I'm going to go on a tangent. I'm going to quit rambling and let you get on with your day. And I hope you either make some gnomes or witch hats or, you know, make some kitty cats. I know um, Sandy um, sculpts really cute kitty cats and the cats would be really cute on these too. Anyway, I will see you in the next video. And for now, go get muddy. <laughs>